Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. We have some evil days. Y'all hear me? And uh, my point behind telling y'all this is that the Most High is going to make some serious moves. Because th like I said before, this truth is going to continue. This gospel is going to continue. And the Most High is going to start really jacking our people up because they're evil and wicked as hell. Okay? So when we come in here, we know that some of us have those tendencies. We know that some of us have those thoughts in our minds. Some of y'all might have some Draco somewhere. You better not bring them here. Better get rid of them damn things. Huh? We ain't dealing with no foolishness. So, um, so it's time for us to change. Time for us to get ourselves together. And I know you brothers are in the right spirit because you're here. Um, so, read, Peter. Well, well, did I have something else? Hebrews, yeah, that's what I needed. Hebrews. So Hebrews. I was talking about us not changing. Yes. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 4. So again, like I was saying, this is about changing our behavior. Let us learn and adhere to what this Bible says and don't be pulled into the temptations of evil. Y'all all right, sisters? Y'all all right, brothers? Read. Come on. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Go ahead. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. Damn. Did y'all did did get what we just read here? Read it again. I'm going to break it down. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 4. Mm -hmm. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. The enlightened was what I was talking about earlier, the illuminated ones, right? We are the light that shineth in a dark place. That's what we were talking about. So you are enlightened. When you come in here and you learn these commandments, you learn the difference between right and wrong. You learn about righteousness versus wickedness. You learn that. You learn how to, you learn the benefits of keeping the commandments. You learn how to deal with your brothers. Hopefully, you learn how to deal with your brothers. You learn how to deal with your sisters. You learn how to deal with your children. You learn all of this by the commandments of God. You learn that. You've associated, you've, you've, you've uh, communicated with your brothers and sisters in here and in the different camps and, and congregations in IUIC. You've learned that. Read that again. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. So the question is, where is the where is the impossibility coming in at? Why is it using the word impossible? Why is it using the word impossible? I gotta I gotta play a video. I gotta play. I'm gonna give you all a video. I got to do it. I'm glad it came up to my mind because I'm gonna do it right. You know. <laughs> Read that again. <laughs> Hebrews chapter six and verse four. For it is impossible. For those who were once enlightened. For those who were once illuminated. For those who were once uh, been shown that ye are the light of the world. That you shineth in a dark place. You were the lighted light bulb in the dark room. Everybody knew you. Go ahead. And have tasted of the heavenly gift. And you've tasted of the heavenly gift that Christ died for you and you're going to get the kingdom. Although we messed up. We broke the laws of God. Christ died on the cross. That sacrifice allowed us to get back or to been reconciled to make reconciliation. We've been reconciled back to the Most High through the blood of Jesus being spilled on the cross. Go ahead. And we're made partakers of the Holy Ghost. And we were made partakers of the Holy Covenant. Go ahead. And have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. That's what you're learning. And that's what you've learned. And that's what you're continuing to learn. Now, all, now, many of us has come through and learned this, understood this, climbed up in rank, 
went very far. But if they were not true to what we're reading, they will fall away. And that's very dangerous. Very dangerous. So this is the reason why I particularly make such a big effort in talking about making sure that your spirit and your behavior is intact with these scriptures. Because that's where the real trouble comes from. This, your mind. When this goes bad, everything else is going right behind it. Like I said, and Esau wants to get up here. Because if he gets up here, he can use your body, your muscles on the football field and all of that, like Colin Kaepernick talking about. Use you up like a piece of meat on a gridiron. Use you women up in a video vixen, shaking going on. Because they got this. They took your mind. Read. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 6. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. You put Christ to an open shame. What does that part mean? You put Christ to an open shame. I'm going to really break that down in case I don't want to make sure there's no outs. There's a, well, maybe I didn't fully understand it. I'm going to explain exactly what it means when it says you put him to an open shame. Give me the scripture where it says the reason of your hope. I'm almost done. Put him to an open shame. That's what I'm dealing with. Uh, you got it? First Peter chapter 3, verse 15. Listen. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. But sanctify, oh, I had it marked down here. But sanctify the Lord God in your minds, like I was talking about earlier. Right? Go ahead. And be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you. So the reason why he or she is coming to you and asking you to get, asking you for an answer of the hope that they see in you is because you are that lighted light bulb. You are that illuminated one. You are that enlightened one, you sisters. You are that illuminated one. They see you, and they're looking at themselves. It's going back to the thing I talked about with Christ, that, that we had to be made like unto his brethren. If we were from Beverly Hills coming and talking to somebody in the ghetto, they, they didn't go relate to that. But some of these people that see us in our changing, they say, well, I used to go to school with him. I used to go to school with her. So there's a kinship, there's a relationship there where they can see, well, if you can do it, I can do it. Because me and you, I knew you. That's the reason why it's important for us to come from all of these different walks. Because when you come and you change, you can go, you, with your example, you can go right back and show them, I made it, you can make it too. That's the point. Nobody from Beverly Hills is going to come and tell us nothing. You, say, you don't know nothing about the hell that I went through. Get out of here before we take your rims. You understand what I'm saying? No, I'm just kidding. I ain't talking about that. But y'all know what I'm digging, right? So um, <laughs> uh, so read that again. First, first Peter chapter 3, verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to so, that. So the people that's looking for an answer is the one that sees you and recognizes that, you know what, you're my brother. I remember we used to do this on the block. We used to do this together. We used to do that together. But I see you change, and I like the change that I see because now you're lighting up. You're lighting up with the laws of God. You're lighting up with the commandments. I see righteousness in you. What is it that you have? Because I need some of that. That's the example that we give. Read. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks of you a reason of the hope that is in you with the, meekness. With the reason of hope that is in your spirit, meaning in your mind. They see your thinking is different. They see you carry yourselves different. They see you dress differently. You're no longer a hoochie hole on the block. You're no longer uh, uh, T. Scrubs with his pants hanging down his behind with a Draco sticking up the crack. You ain't rolling like that. Y'all all right? So you represent a level of change. You represent a hope that he sees, that she sees. Read that again. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. With meekness and fear. So we always have to be ready to give an answer to those that see us as the enlightened ones, that see us as the example. Because they see the way we, they see what's in our minds, it comes out in our actions. Everybody's with me. 
So now let's go back over to where we was at. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 6. If they shall fall away. If these enlightened ones, look at verse 4 so you can understand what it's talking about. Look at verse 4. Verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. These people were the ones that was being asked about the hope that they see because they were enlightened. That's you and me. Y'all understand this? We were enlightened. And people saw that enlightenment and they asked about that hope that they see in you. But the Bible says it is impossible for those same persons who were once enlightened. Go ahead. Read verse 4 again. Verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. These enlightened brothers like you and me, we learn this and we know what's coming. We know the future. That's what I was saying earlier. Come on. If they shall fall away. If we shall turn our back on this. To renew them again unto repentance. Meaning go back into the world. That's what it's talking about. Go back into the world. You stop the commandments. The people still saw you. The people understood that you were once enlightened. And then they see, well, why you ain't enlightened no more? Why are you doing this? Why you went back to that? The shame comes when the brothers see that what, what, what happened. And you send that same soul right back out with you. That's the danger in that. Read that sixth verse. Verse 6. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh. How do they crucify again the Son of God? Because you're saying that his first crucifixion meant nothing. It's in vain. He died for nothing. He died for you to get the kingdom. You had to, you came into the grace. You came there, and then you went right back out. So what did Christ's death mean for you? Nothing. Ain't that something? Some dangerous stuff, there, ain't it? That's why it behooves you to make sure that your mind stay right. Don't allow that, that, uh, being turned back into the world, back to your old vomit. Don't do that. Fight like hell to stay in this. That's what my old, old elder told, told me, told Bishop when we was there. Told us that. He did now, a while back. We've been done a long time. But it was, I, you know, I, he basically raised us in the scriptures. And he said, no matter how hard it gets, never give up. Those words stick with me like, like, like my skin. I ain't never going to forget that. No matter how hard it gets, never give up. And I like the fact that Deacon Malachi have coined that phrase with us. Never give up. Never give, in. never give up. Never give in. That's the same thought. That's the same thought. All praise to the most high. Y'all hear that? Read. And put him to an open shame. So you put Christ to an open shame because the brothers that were once seeing you in your enlightenedness, they don't see it no more. And this is why I tell everyone. If I get a hold to him before he, before he just defects and just goes into the world, I said, mind you, that you're offending the little ones. This is where I get that from, even though it's a scripture that says that. You offend the little ones because you put Christ to an open shame, and they were trying to follow. Not saying that man's supposed to follow man, but we lead by example. People see us. People see you. And they say, well, if you can do it, I can do it. And then they see us go off. That spirit that was trying to build his faith up, was looking at you first till he gets enough strength where he can stand on his own. But yet the, at the beginning, it's you that's showing them the light. They didn't understand Deuteronomy 28. They didn't understand. You had to show them that. You had to show them how to dress. You had to show them how to deal. They had to learn that from you. And then you turn around and you leave the brothers. You leave the sisters. Then you put Christ to an open shame. Somebody comes behind after all of that destruction that happened when they were looking up to you. Somebody say, yo, I, I, you was telling me about going to that school and learning this and learning that. And your spirit is all changed. You ain't even talking about that no more because you've been uh, misguided by following somebody who have lost the light. Y'all understand, understand what I'm saying? That's the danger. Now I'm going to zero in on why it says impossible. 
Read the verse again, fourth verse. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 4. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. Mm -hmm. If they shall fall away. If they shall fall away, it is impossible for them to return. That's what I want to talk about. It is impossible for them to turn. Here's the reason why. Everybody's with me? The reason why is because once you learn what righteousness is, and we can say to ourselves, I ain't never going to turn away from this Bible. And you can say that because at the moment you're in your right mind. Y'all understand what I'm saying? I always give this example. When you first started learning, I mean, from the, the very basic steps of algebra, algebra, the, the math, and they give you the number line, right? The zero, one, two, three, four, five, six on the plus side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on the negative side, right? You got negative one, two, three, four, five, positive one, two, three, four, five, right? And the, the reference that determines where the negative begins and where the positive begins is zero. Follow me. It's zero. All of us have that understanding, right? If somebody says, hey, listen, your, your, zero, your reference to determine where the negative and the positive is, is with zero is not correct. Somebody says that your, your reference to monitor or to measure what is positive or negative is negative three. Follow what I'm saying. Now, you're thinking that when you go to negative three, you're thinking that everything on the plus side of the negative three is positive when it's still negative two, negative one. You can no longer have a conversation with them. But if they believe that that's right, they're done. That's the impossibility. That's called their reprobate mind. That's what happens to brothers and sisters when they leave this truth. You can't even communicate with them no more because their reference is totally off. It's like we understand two and two is four. They're talking about some two and two is seven. And they're arguing with you. And you know that. You say, man, we can't even talk no more. That's when that serious delusion has hit them. That's, some, that's what happens to them when they do that. Okay? Now, give me the video. I didn't even send it to you, but I, I think I did. Crack. Did I put it up there? Look on Bible Book of Our Fathers. I said, crack. <laughs> I'm going to play this video. He said, this dude is something else. <laughs> um, crack is the boss. Put that up there, YouTube. Watch this. Crack is the boss. Are y'all ready for this? I'm going to give it to you now. Kids ain't got to run out the room, but it's an eye opener. I'm going to give you a perfect example of what it means to be when your channels have been changed and, your, and the delusion has hit you to the point where it is impossible to come back. When certain things hit you in your head. Somebody give you some doctrine that mess your understanding of that zero reference that I talked about. And once it's off, it's off. If you think you're correct when you're off, why would you try to correct yourself if you already think you're correct? You ever try to argue? You ever try to get somebody to see something and you know they're wrong? and they think they're correct, you can't budge them. You cannot do nothing with them because they think they're right. That's scary to witness that. I see that often, especially with people in this truth whose minds go bad. And I'm trying to say, brother, you're off. Sister, you're off. And they just don't see it. That's scary. Crack is the boss. You got it? Let me see it. The brother with the glasses. Now, give me the other one. There's two of them. I didn't watch that one yet. Uh, go back. There was two of them that, was, that came together. There's one without all that writing behind it. Still talking about that one right there. It's 11 minutes. I want to watch all of it. Y'all all right? Start from the beginning now. But let me set it up. This is 1981. I was talking about the crack thing earlier, remember? Harlem, New York, that's where I'm from. In Harlem, crack was all over the place. Uptown Manhattan, Dykeman, uh, 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 Inwood section of New York, Uptown uh, Manhattan and all that. Crack, 
them Dominicans, all that, you know, they 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 going crazy with it. Huh? I said, them, them, those are my brothers. We teach out there. That's Simeon. Y'all all right? We got a camp going on out there, too. But my point is, crack had hit hard. So this brother, this says, interview of a well-educated engineer detailing his $1,600 an hour crack addiction. See? I told you they weren't ready for this. $1,600 in one hour. And he articulates how it works. Can you dig it? So the brother is being interviewed by Gil Noble from Like It Is in New York. And he's going to he's going to explain how crack works. I remember what I was going to say now. I had a conversation with someone not too long ago who wanted to deal in wicked behavior. Brother in the truth. Wanted to deal. This is a smaller brother. He ain't no rank or nothing like that. Smaller brother. And I was talking to him and I was saying, brother, if you go down this road, you're going to get jacked up, okay? I was also telling him, I said, I come out of a field, my profession when I was in New York, I worked and I've seen a lot of these kids go down these skid rows. And I said, you're going down that path. And I was called. I went to his spot like three hours away to talk, to sit and talk with him, talk with his parents and everybody. And I'm telling him, I said, brother, I see the trajectory of where you're going brought video, brought all kind of things to try to win him. And he said to me, he said, well, I just want to go deal with it, and then I'll come back. That was just, that's what he said. So I said, brother, if you go deal with it, you ain't coming back, and I'm going to tell you why. I said, you're able to tell us that now because you're somewhat in your right mind only because we're here. If you get to fall too much, in, even in your thoughts as you're talking to us, we're going to correct you. So you have a hedge right now. So we can intervene before you go too far into the abyss with this stupid speech you're saying. So that's the only reason why you can say that I will go and play over there and I'll be back. That's because we're here. I said, but we're in the room. But once you go into there, what is the guarantee that your mind won't change where it will begin to justify that as the norm. I said, if you begin to justify that as the norm, what we're saying is like we're on crack. You dig what I'm saying? That's the danger of going reprobate. And that's what I was saying to the brother. So when it said, in, when it said here in Ephesians, for it is impossible that's where the impossibility comes in at because your mind changes. That's that strong delusion that you shall believe a lie. You will believe that the zero reference is negative three. Once you believe that, you're finished. Once you leave out of the righteous basket and go somewhere else where it's wicked and you interpret that as righteousness, nobody can reach you after that. And that's what this brother's going to explain. And what's worse about it, he's going to articulate how it happens. Just listen to this here. Y'all all right? I think they warmed up now, right? Hit it. Just listen. Bob Williams, a crack user, called me years ago me. and asked me to interview well, him. The reason I called you was I felt that the story of crack had to be told in such a way that people would see its effect as devastating effects on the young people of our communities. My own uh, personal experience with crack has been one of, uh, how could I say, uh, <laughs> complete madness. My first nine months in using crack, I spent over $50,000, which included... Uh, say that again, please. My first nine months of involvement with crack I've spent over $50,000. $50,000? $50,000. Where did you get this kind of money from? 
Well, money, some of it was money that I had saved up. I was currently working as an engineer for a communications firm earning $35,000 a year. I would spend my entire paycheck in one night on crack. So after my pay was gone, I would go to the bank and I started to deplete my savings. Who turned you on to crack? An old uh, girlfriend of mine. Who turned you on to crack? He said an old girlfriend of mine. That's the reason why we tell you, brothers and sisters, when somebody leaves this truth, delete them from your pages. It ain't that we're just trying to be lords over you. We're saying this for a reason. If they already have demonstrated that they, that they no longer want to use this as their guide and their reference, and they leave, what is the reason that they're talking to you for? Because they want to change your zero reference to negative three as well with them. And I've been in this truth 30 years now. Everyone that gets sucked out of this, and I'm going to use that word right, every one of you, of these little ones that gets sucked out by the, by the, errant, by the errant one, the one that did not want to face correction, that did not want to get uh, corrected and reproved, everyone that followed them, once they left and they went back into the world, not, nobody is looking for that spirit that left. Could you, like I often say, how many people do you think I've encountered in 30 years of people coming into this truth and being misled by those that walked away from this enlightenment? And out of all of them that left, I have not known, I can almost say not known one. That when they went out, that the errant one that led them out, that talked to them, that spoke to them, when they were instructed not to uh, uh, listen to them, they actually listened to them followed them out into the world, and when they got into the world, they got lost, and the same person that took them out don't even know where the person is and don't give a damn. I'm talking, I could start naming names, and I'll be talking until 5 o'clock about the different people that I've known that have left following evil. And when they left, they left and they never got found again, and they're back into the world, some of them on stripper poles, some of them smoking crack, dope, all of it. I'm talking all those different levels. Fully back in. And we warned them, leave, when them spirits leave, leave them alone. They didn't listen. And they got caught up into that thing. And once that, once that, that, that standard changes and your standard becomes something else, that becomes your standard. And that's where the super danger comes in because there's no, there's no reaching. There's a parable that says that. He's covered with thorns and thistles. You can't even reach him in the Gospels. It said he's covered up. You can't even go and pull him out of the fire. Because he's, in, he's justifying his own evil and wickedness. You can't tell him nothing. Men and women. I've seen this countless times. So here we are. This brother. I want you all to look at this brother. Do he look like a bum? This is in the 80s. He worked for, uh, well, he got a NASA jacket on. This guy is an engineer. And then you, when you hear the stuff that comes out of this man's mouth, and he's going to articulate how the, how the crack affects the body and affects the brain and all of that. And you say to yourself, well, damn, if you can explain all of this, how the hell you get hooked on it? This is a mind-blowing interview. Y'all all right? <coughs> Let it rip. They need to take a ride with her. So, the, oh, so. I, I, here's the reason. Because the girlfriend introduced this to him. That's the reason why I stopped it. His girlfriend introduced it to him. So back it up just a little bit, and then I'm going to play. But back it up just a little bit because I want to get all that statement. So he said, how did you get started into this? He said, a girl, an old girlfriend of his. The girlfriend ain't even with him no more. Because he said, an old girlfriend. So that ain't somebody recent. You dig it? But once she hit that poop and his reference changed, tell me something, I'm going to try to crack and I'll come back. You ain't coming back. Because once you hit it, once you hit these different philosophies, these different thoughts, playing with these different sins, once your mind change, you don't have the wisdom to come back into something that you now deem is wrong. You Now you think that the wickedness that you're in is correct. We're still in the truth. You will hear this. I'm following Jesus Christ. That's what they would say. That's the danger. That's crack. That's the effect of crack. You on that damn thing, and you thinking that you're in the right, and you try to have a conversation with him? Play. 
I was currently working as an engineer for a communications firm earning $35,000 a year. I would spend my entire paycheck in one night on crack. $35,000 a year in 1980. That's 40 years ago. What do you think that's equivalent to now? Give me some mathematician. So, huh? It's like $200,000. I didn't even know it was that high. That's about $200,000. So he was making, how much did they say he was making? $35,000 in 1981, in the 1980s. That's like $200,000 now, brother said. Just think about this. Just keep that in mind. Hit it. I would spend my entire paycheck in one night on crack. So after my pay was gone, I would go to the bank and I started to deplete my savings. Who turned you on to crack? An old uh, girlfriend of mine uh, one evening had invited me to take a ride with her. And we did so. And she bought some crack. And we went back to her place and she began to smoke and asked me if I wanted to try it. So at first I was a little bit reluctant, but then I said, all right, well, I'll give it a try. The reluctance is the spirit of righteousness trying to keep you from falling headlong. That's when the scriptures is trying to kick in a little bit. But then you have to tell that, that Bible voice to quiet down because I want to go ahead and do this. Understand this. Y'all hear what I'm saying, right? Y'all hear what's going on. He said, at first I was reluctant. That's when that choice, that, that, that question comes up, should I really be doing this? Here's my chance to escape. Here's my chance to get out of this before I get in too deep. But you have to ignore that. You have to, and how, that, how do you ignore that voice? That other person might even see it in you. They say, look like you might want to try to back out of this thing. So let me say, it would be wonderful to pull you past that fence. And once they pull you past that fence and get that momentum going, you're wide open. You dig it? Some scary stuff, ain't it? Go ahead. And my very first night, I believe I spent $60. The next morning, I was at the bank's door before it opened, and I spent another 400 Tell me what it was like, that first blast. It's unlike anything I've ever experienced in my life. It's, it's really, there's not even any words for it to describe it. It's a feeling so intense and so pleasurable that it, I've seen it cause people to spend their last penny. I've seen people spend their rent money their food money, their, their everything. You mean from that first time you were gone? Yes. That first hit to me was, was so immense and so unlike anything I'd ever had in my life that I just had to try it again. Had you ever had any involvement with drugs leading up to that? Well, having lived in California for a few years and having been with the Hollywood set, I had tried cocaine on occasion. And crack is something that would cause you to put cocaine down. <laughs> crack is, is it's so, uh, so much mm -hmm. more of a high to it, so much of more of a rush, that most people who start using crack usually stop sniffing cocaine. Pause it. Do y'all notice how articulate he's explaining this? This guy could be a doctor, the way he's talking. Y'all noticing this, right? Keep on playing. You make a big distinction between crack and cocaine, don't you? So to speak, they're, they're really the same drug, but it's how it's administered. Mm -hmm. Cocaine being sniffed and entering the blood system through the nasal and mucous membranes of the nose. Crack is smoked, inhaled into the lungs, and therefore in five to 10 seconds causes an immense rush to the head. Mm -hmm. Stop, mm -hmm. stop, 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 stop. Did y'all hear that? That's doctor talk. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's scientist talk. Tobacco scientists talk about how the, how, the, how the defects of tobacco cross the blood-brain barrier and, and mucous membranes to give you a more... Into, that's science talk there. He's talking that. Go ahead. You say you, the Hollywood set. Without naming names, uh, what kind of scene did you get into out there? Well, I attended parties in Hollywood where cocaine was passed around in bowls like it would, they were all d'oeuvres. They were uh, all kinds of different brands of marijuana, reefers, whatever you want to call them, in five pound cigar boxes. And it was uh, just like you were at a, <laughs> a party, but the hors d'oeuvres were drugs. 
these are actors and actresses? Yes. Names? Name. Some name people? Some name people. Some, some top rated shows. And you just died. He's talking right about the people, some world. of the people that we might know. He can't name them. That's famous people. Go ahead. And you just dived right into this whole set. <laughs> well, not really. I just kind of eased into it. And once you do, uh, you know, it's, it was the, the end thing to do. And uh, all of Hollywood was, you know, was ablaze with it. Okay. So if you didn't, you were more of an outcast, I guess, than mm -hmm. if you did. And then you came back east. I came back east. Still hadn't heard about crack yet. Still hadn't heard about crack yet. I think Richard Pryor's experience was really opened up a lot of people's eyes to what freebasing was all about. And crack has, is is more, just more so a marketing technique by the <laughs> by the pushers. They package it pretty well these days, and it makes it a little bit more appealing. But it's basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so you say that after that first night of sixty bucks, you went back to the bank the next morning. Got the next morning, I spent another four hundred, and my checking account was consistently overdrawn. I would go to the cash machine and take out my maximum for the day. And I would go to the bank and cash a check against money that the bank thought I still had. And it, my account was constantly overdrawn and it, it stayed that way. I don't think people understood what he just said. He would withdraw the money that he had in the bank. Now he puts that in his pocket. Then he would write a check for the same amount that he took out, which you know that you've already taken it out. That's how crack get down. That's how a reprobate mind gets down. It's going to get heavier. Go ahead. I'm self-employed now uh, because I've been unable to hold a job. I recently had a job that uh, was paying me $33,000 a year, and it lasted two weeks. My first two weeks. Wait a minute. Tell me what happened with this job. Well, I reported to work on Monday. On Tuesday, I made a mistake of stopping at the crack house before I went to work. So I was absent Tuesday. I was absent Wednesday. I figured, well, I better shape up or I won't be here much longer. So Thursday and Friday, I went to work. The following Monday, after a short job I had to do, I said, well, I'll stop for a minute and I'll get one and I'll go back to work. I didn't get back to work till Wednesday. So of course, by Wednesday, it's... <laughs> and Friday was my, that Friday was my last day. And this was a $35,000 a year job? Yes. With an expense account? Yes. Car? Yes. And you just blew it. Just like that. How do you feel about that? Well, I have the, a portable skill which I could go out tomorrow and get another job if I wanted to. What I feel that? bad about it. Well, I'm into electronics and telecommunications. And I've been in the telecommunications industry about nine years now. So when I'm not working full time for an employer, I work for myself doing consulting and other, you know, other jobs, installation. What, what specific skill do you have in telecommunications? What do you do? Well, I was, I'm trained as an, what they call a, a switchman. I oversee electric uh, telephone company, electric offices, well, switching systems. When you pick up your telephone and make a phone call, it goes to a central office at the phone company. Well, that piece of equipment at the phone company that does all the switching of these telephone calls is which I maintain. Mm -hmm. The person who tries to work and uh, maintain themselves on what a situation such as crack, it's to, to just don't mix, it's like water and oil. Am I to conclude that you're finished with it? No, don't conclude that. <laughs> uh, I probably now, on the average, spend uh, $100 a day. It's about uh, 2 o'clock now. Have you had any today? Not yet. But yet? Not, not yet. But you can believe when I leave here, it's probably be my next stop. Now, you're a well-educated man. You have some experience in engineering. Yes. You have earning power, obviously. Right. Why would you be fooling with this stuff? You can stand by and see what's happening to, to your own life, can't you? I used to say the same thing. I used to uh, witness people, and even people who were close to me, have their lives destroyed by it. And I used to witness people sit in these places and spend their last penny. And I say to them, how could you do such a thing, you know? Stop. That's what I wanted to get to. Do y'all hear him? He's actually saying, he said, I used to think, because Gil is asking him the, the question. He said, 
How could you sit by when you know what this thing does to people? You know what it's done to families. You know what it is. And he's saying, as the victim, he says, I've, he said, I used to think the same thing. I've seen what it does. And he's articulating it. Do y'all get what's happening? He's actually talking. He's in full agreement with what the interviewer is asking him. Back it up a little bit. This is what I was talking about when I said one show, because he didn't make the point that I'm about to make yet. He's still operating from, like I said, we had the brother in the room, and we were still there. And we can still keep him from going too far to the left. So that's how he's talking now. He didn't change his, his reference to negative three. You'll follow me. Well, that's, well, that's the way he measures right and wrong. So he understands, he understands how people will look at him. Back it up and get it, get that, get that statement. You have earning power, obviously. Right. Why would you be fooling with this stuff? You can stand by and see what's happening to, the, to your own life, can't you? I used to say the same thing. I used to uh, witness people, and even people who were close to me, have their lives destroyed by it. And I used to witness people sit in these places and spend their last penny. And I say to them, how could you do such a thing, you know? But once you have tried it, you become the anchor banker, you understand. <laughs> it really, it's that much of a feeling or a sensation that it causes, it has wrecked lives, careers, broken up homes. What he's saying is that he's like, we'll be sitting here and we're talking. I'm going to give you the equivalent of what he's saying. We're talking about when people go reprobate. How could you go over there and start see, seeing negative three as equal zero? You follow me? And we're having this conversation because we know that negative three do not equal zero, correct? He says, and I used to understand that. But he said, but once I moved over and tried negative three as zero, now I understand what it's about and the hell with what zero really means. This is the new standard. He's able to articulate that. That's when your reprobate has set in hard. How in the world could he, like the scripture say, it is impossible once they were they, of them that were once enlightened to return? Because once you begin to see that that's it, everything else is wrong. They're unreachable. That's why it is dangerous to play with the Most High. Play on. It's it's just something you can't really describe. What kind of shape is your life in now? Well, I've, I've been a little bit more fortunate than most that uh, I have a roof over my head. Uh, some people who are into crack usually pay their rent months in advance so they don't get evicted, the smart ones. Because believe me, brother, if whatever money you have in your pocket you walk in there with, you're not going to walk out with it. So How much do you have on you now? A little over $200. And you're going to blow all of that? In about an hour and a half. What's the most you've used in a day? <clears throat> the most I ever spent was thirteen hundred dollars in six hours. Thirteen hundred dollars. One thousand three hundred dollars in six hours. I can't even describe. I wouldn't. I defy anyone to try and tell me that the most pleasurable thing that they've ever experienced in their life. However, I would never tell anyone to take it. But I'm, once they have, I, I dare them to tell me that it's not the the best feeling they've ever had. You love it, don't you? Well, I don't know if I'd say I'd love it, but... Uh, it's well, if it's the best feeling you've ever had, you know what most people right. automatically think. Right. And it's better than that? Yes. It's better than that. Then you must love it. It's, it's, it's nice. He love didn't it. even bat it's... an eye. He said, is it better than sex? That's what he asked him. For, you know, everybody knew what he meant. And he didn't even... He didn't... It, yes. <laughs> he just whap, just like that. Damn. Go ahead. Now, I'm going to come down hard on you. Crack has made you its punk, hasn't it? <laughs> it's got you running, it's got your nose open, right. and it's your master. Yeah. You admit that, just like that. Sure. Just that's like what that. I was sure. saying about this brother that's dealing with this Instagram foolishness. This woman got his nose open and he doesn't see where she's taking him. That was the point. Back that up again and let me get that statement and then I'm going to let it play on out. Uh, well, if it's the best feeling you've ever had, you know what most people right. automatically think. Right. And it's better than that? Yes. It's better than that. Then you must love it. It's, it's, it's nice. Now, I'm going to come down hard on you. Crack has made you its punk, hasn't it? <laughs> it's got you running. It's got your nose open. Right. And it's your master. Yeah. You admit that, just like that. Sure. 
some people won't. I know a lot of people who are undercover crack users or in the closet, but I have no qualms about saying that. Do you know anybody who uses crack and controls crack rather than vice versa? No. Crack is the boss. They will make you crack up. <laughs> crack is the boss. When you take that hit, that second voice that starts talking to you is now in control. You're not yourself anymore. You get up in the morning and that's the first thing you think about? Sometimes I dream about it. In going to these crack houses, you've probably seen some horror stories. You probably have a whole list of them, don't you? <laughs> well, unfortunately, I do. And I've seen some people as young as, I would say, probably 16, 17 years old. I have been in a crack house on occasion where a young girl came in with her father. And she couldn't have been no more than 16, 17 years old. And she says, no, no, daddy, it's my turn to buy. I've been in a crack house where I saw a girl in a Catholic school uniform come in, and she couldn't have been no more than 16 or 17 years old. And she bought some cracks and left. And she didn't even go home and change clothes for her, so he didn't even send someone else for her. She came herself. I've seen telephone repairmen, the equipment and all, in crack houses. I've seen security guards in crack houses. I've seen transit workers in uniform in crack houses. And I guess it disturbs them not to be there because they are there sitting, smoking away. I've seen people come from New Jersey, go to a crack house, gas tank on empty, and can't even get home. I've seen people go to lunch and never go back to work. I personally have smoked crack in Harlem Hospital in the ladies' room with a girlfriend of mine who used to work there. I've seen women who will come to a crack house with their children and have them wait outside, 8, 9 o'clock at night. Children, have the children wait outside? Wait outside. Children 4, 5, and 6 years old are standing outside waiting for their mothers, and their mothers are inside smoking on this crack. I've seen a girl one day brought her baby to the crack house, and she was in such a rush to get high that she couldn't wait 20 minutes to cash her check. She pawned her child to the crack man and says, please give me a dime. I'll be back in 20 minutes, hold my baby. Pawned her child. Yes, for $10. Bob Williams died not long after the interview I did with him. Did y'all get that? So he was so locked into it, it ended up killing him, but he articulated the dangers of it. He was able to explain it, and it still did not change him. So you'll see people that'll go off and will try to articulate what they've done and articulate their new life of sin and won't even see their error until they're clocked out. The most are going to take them out. They ain't getting the kingdom. And they're thinking that they're getting the kingdom. So I use that as an expressive uh, illustration of what we was reading here about the impossibility of returning. Once your mind changes, once your, once your, uh, once your understanding between right and wrong changes. That's the, le that's the literal definition of reprobate, where you can't make judgment, where you can't judge things properly. And you actually think that that is the normal. That's still in the truth. That's still in righteousness. I'm still in the Bible. You're on crack. You're on the spiritual crack. You're done. Some scary stuff, ain't it? So... I'm going to end it there, but my point behind all of that is this right here goes to show why I make such an emphasis on us in terms of our behavior, in terms of our spirit, making sure that we make sure that we stay steadfast, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. That's the reason why that word is there, diligence. You got to fight daily and ignore those voices of temptation. Because those soft voices, just like that girlfriend that took him to the crack house, and uh, from that led him all the way down to destruction. He even acknowledged that's the way he's going, but he said, but the addiction is so strong, I know it's going to kill me, but I'm still going to do it. So this, these spirits ain't nothing to play with. All right, so with that, brothers and sisters, we say shalom, happy Sabbath. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark.
Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. <laughs>